you know, they say when they start a class, it's like you get into a race car and you go zero to 100 immediately. Because I know when you come here, you don't want some long, boring introductions. You want to get to the goods right away. So first thing that we're going to be talking about today is how the landscape has changed how the world has changed, how the landscape has changed. Number two, why, uh, why a wow idea? Why a wow idea? Number three is fun, profitable, beneficial. I'll show you how to choose and select a wow idea that works for you. Number four, what makes an idea wow? Wow. <laughs> and number five, three pitfalls of wow ideas. Three pitfalls of wow idea. So first off, for those who are appreciating the new microphone and the lighting, thank you. I've been working hard in the background. Um, <clears throat> so in the year 2018, I went to Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, and I see some of you are here from Sri Lanka. So give me a shout out in the comments if you're tuning in from Sri Lanka. So I went to Sri Lanka, I think it was 2018, because at that time, um, I think it was Lonely Planet mentioned that Sri Lanka is the number one tourist country in the world that you must visit. <laughs> and I went to Sri Lanka and it was a wonderful time, had a wonderful time in Sri Lanka. And then after that, um, you know, actually a few months after was the bombing that took place. And you may have seen my post on Facebook back in that time, the guide who took us around in Sri Lanka was killed. He was a, he was a chef at the uh, Shangri-La Hotel in Colombo and he was killed in that blast. And so it really hit home for me. And after that blast happened, basically tourism was shut down in, um, in Sri Lanka. And um, you can imagine that a country that was named the number one tourist destination in the world completely shut down for tourism for months. And I remember one of the, um, the tour guides who took us on a safari, he said for months and months, nobody has come. Um, all the hotels are empty, all the safaris are empty, all the livelihood, everything that's related to tourism was shut down. Now, that being said, that's Sri Lanka. I want you to take a step back for a second and realize that this has happened now to the entire world. The entire earth has experienced this. The entire earth, okay? So, <clears throat> And to give you just like a little glimpse of subhanAllah, when, um, when COVID kind of like kicked off and um, the, the month was like March, 2020, I went to the poor part of town in my city and I tried to convince some laborers to go home and protect themselves from this, to stay home. And their boss wanted them to work. They're like, don't care about them, <laughs> just go work. And they didn't have enough money to pay for the upcoming week. Let me say it again. They didn't have enough money to pay for the upcoming week. And those businesses have shut down now for probably like a year and a half. It's going on like almost coming in like to two years that these businesses have shut down. That is not your local background. That is the entire world. There is nobody here in the souk challenge that has not experienced what I'm talking about. It's almost like a cliche that I'm telling you guys this, that the world has changed. Like, and it's sad, you'll go to shops, oh, that closed too. Oh, that like childhood places. Maybe you took, if you have kids, you took ki your kids places, it's shut down. So let's look at um, some industries that this has closed down or the world has closed down. Number one is travel. Travel, every hotel in the world, in the world has been effective. Um, every hotel in the world has been effective. Um, there was um, one time I was traveling in Nova Scotia in Canada and there was a business that wasn't doing so well. And, and the owner of that hotel is kind of like an Airbnb, uh, not Airbnb, it's called a bread and breakfast, bed and breakfast. He told me that there was a flight that came from, from Iceland to this part of Nova Scotia. And he said, and that 
airline wasn't able to get like um, daily flights. The Canadian government wouldn't give them daily flights. So they shut down all the flights to Canada. And he said, my business like was almost shut down because the airline wasn't bringing tourists into the country. Again, you want to imagine that um, the whole world is like this. Businesses everywhere. Look at restaurants, and, and not only the hotels, but everything connected to the hotels, the restaurants, which we'll talk about here, but the taxi services, the, um, the supermarket, everything is like boom, 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 domino effect. The restaurants, you no, know, you can't go, you can't eat at the restaurant, they, you know, social distancing and so on. Restaurants went out of business. Education, um, <laughs> education was you know, like all the children stay home. How could these universities uh, justify charging like $50,000, $100,000 if their students are studying on Zoom and you're now in competition with the entire world? And you might even think that, hey, my job, and tell me, guys, tell me in the comments, has your job or your industry been affected? Chances are it has. There's no industry that hasn't been affected. And, and not necessarily um, for bad. Actually, some industries might have been affected for good. Say, for example, hey, I'm, uh, sorry, Discover You here. We've been doing online classes since 2013, since our first visionaire um, in Ramadan in Mecca. And we did it by phone from Mecca because there was no video at that time. We've been online since 2013. So, yes. Discover You was affected, but actually for the better, because so many people are, were at home and, you know, and they're stuck in the house. It's Ramadan time and they're shut down and it's like, hey, we've been doing this um, visionaire for like the last seven years, eight years, 10 years online. Why don't you come join us and see what we got? So, yes, some businesses are affected for the better and some for the worse. And I see some of you, yes, it's been affected. Yes, it's been affected. Yes, it's been affected. <clears throat> so what if I told you guys, in addition to this, um, the tsunami of effect on the marketplace is not over yet. <laughs> it's not over yet because so many people are now making their businesses online. Industries like, oh, there's a tour group that was, you know, um, I, I went on a tour. Now they're doing virtual tours. This um, conference, the TED conference is not no longer, it's online. Everybody's literally just going on Zoom, going on Zoom, going on Zoom. How much Zoom can you take was the Zoom fatigue, right? So if you think that your idea is just be like, I'm gonna go on Zoom as well, that at a certain point, people are gonna be saturated. Hey, we can't do Zoom anymore. Um, what are you going to do? How are you gonna be affected? And then you've got, artificial intelligence coming into the picture. You've got all of these other things that will take businesses away. Yeah, a lot. There are things coming. So that's not a problem. That's not a problem if you can change with the change of time. That's not a problem if you can change with the change of time. And I'll tell you guys just uh, like a side, I, I was sitting with my son and my son's very young and I was telling him about radio. And I said, and this is even before my time, I'm like, radio was so popular and people used to sit around the radio and listen to like radio programs. And then television came along and everybody said, oh, this is just a passing fad. Um, television will come and go. Nobody will leave radio to go watch the television and stuff like that, right? And then, and then I was like, radio, no. Uh, what is it? What's that song? Video killed the radio star. When I was a little kid, this is what like a kid bop song. I didn't really understand what it meant. That was like in the 80s. But but I, I understand it now. Video killed the radio star. Yes. And that's not the end of it, brothers and sisters you will, things will continue to be killed off, killed off, killed off, and it'll get faster and faster and faster <laughs> and so on. Cool. So, so point number two here, why wow idea? So I'm telling you how to birth a wow idea. I am sure that a lot of you people have tons of ideas. That's human nature to have tons of ideas, tons of ideas, tons of ideas. 
good for you. Everybody's got ideas, but nobody said your idea is outstanding. You can have ideas, I'm happy for you, but nobody said your idea is outstanding because outs an outstanding idea is different than an idea, okay? <clears throat> so if you have an idea that's a good idea, and by the way, I hate, you know, when people ask me questions, um, I'm really particular about what specifically is the question you're asking. So sometimes, um, somebody will give me an idea and then they're like, do you think it's a good idea? I'm like, that's the wrong question. Good ideas go to the trash can. <laughs> good ideas go to the, if you're British, the rubbish bin. Because good ideas are not good enough. You cannot have a good idea and you're going to work on it for the next like seven years or something like that. This is a really cool drink of mine. It is tea with um, grass fed uh, butter and oil. So it's kind of like bulletproof tea. Very nice. Mashallah. All right. So imagine like an archer pulls back and taking a shot. And here's a good idea. A good idea um, hits below where you aim for it. A good idea is garbage. Good ideas are garbage because there's too many good ideas, blah, blah, blah. Um, a second idea, you might say, I have an excellent idea. And if you have an excellent idea, everybody's idea is excellent. Just go to the mall and you'll see a whole bunch of excellent ideas. And if you have an excellent idea and excellent execution, all of these things, then you will be average. Say it again. If you have an excellent idea and you have excellent execution, you will be average because that's everybody. <laughs> everybody has excellent ideas and you'll be average. What you got to do is have an outstanding idea. If you want to go places, you want to, um, and by the way, I, I know I'm just talking. There are brothers and sisters here taking notes, and some of them are going to design what I'm saying in nice graphics. So you feel free to just sit and listen, and inshallah ta'ala, in the uh, Facebook group after, you will have... Um, you can have access to those uh, to the notes after. So don't worry too much about, uh, but take notes like if it helps you concentrate better. So in, when you have an idea that's outstanding, it remains outstanding. That's the nature. You just have to be a little bit better than other people's ideas. And then it's like, wow, Airbnb, wow. How many other hotel websites and services are there? There's like a billion of them. But Airbnb stands apart. It's like, wow, how many chicken restaurants are there? There's a ton of them, but Chick-fil-A or KFC, they stand above and so on and so forth. They are just a little bit better. And what they're better at isn't necessarily something huge. They might be better at something like something really small, but they're still outstanding, something a little bit better than that. <clears throat> so let me give you this analogy. If you've ever seen children playing soccer, Again, if you're British, football or the rest of the world, pretty much. Um, so children playing soccer or football, you'll notice that. And actually, I learned this lesson when I was a child playing soccer with my um, with my um, colleagues in uh, in with my colleagues in Quran school when I was like 12 years old. I noticed that wherever the ball would go every single child would run after the ball. And so I stepped back and I said to myself, if I just stand to the other side of the court, the other side of the field, I'll be completely open. Somebody can throw me the ball and I can score a goal. Very easy, no problems whatsoever. <clears throat> when it comes to ideas, when it comes to, if you have a business and you have like some ideas, um, chances are you're chasing the ball similar to how these everybody's chasing the same thing. Let me give you some examples. When it comes to the Muslim community, you guys actually, you guys tell me in the comments, what are some business ideas that everybody in the Muslim I, uh, in the community keeps doing? <laughs> Let you tell me one and I'll give you one back. Let's go back and forth. What are some ideas? 
Okay, Kouser says hijab businesses. Yeah, I got this idea. I'm going to be like making sisters hijabs. <laughs> okay, great. I'll give you one. <laughs> okay, I was going to say chicken and chip shops. No, Sheen says chicken restaurants. And if you're in Ottawa, um, shawarma restaurants. Uh, some people said coaching. How many sisters do you know that are doing coaching? I'm starting this business. I'm doing coaching. I'll give you a free session because I'm doing coaching. <laughs> Okay, alhamdulillah. I'm not saying anything wrong with these businesses there. They've proven to be successful, but it's the same concept of children running after the same soccer ball when there's so much open field. There's so much space to do something a little bit different, something on the other side of the field, and you will have no competition. You'll be on your own. Um, meat shops, okay, doing halal meat, yeah. Slaughter and bring it to community. Uh, garments, be uh, Islamic books. I think Eva says Islamic books. I think that was old. Nobody does Islamic books anymore. Yeah, it was a business before, but now nobody's reading anymore, right? Restaurants, 100%. There's so many restaurants. How many Islamic banks do you have in your city? Maybe if you're in a Muslim country, there's more Islamic banks, but we have more restaurant halal restaurants than we have halal financial instruments in like Western countries. Okay, great. So you get the idea. In our community, there's certain businesses that we're really good at, and then other businesses that we're just open. So what you can do right from the get-go right here is come up with an idea. Just say to yourself, what is everybody else doing, and how can I do something separate from that? And you'll immediately stand out. You'll immediately stand out because they're like, wow, we've never seen that before. Did you see what I just said there? Wow. So this is what I say when, when um, thinking of wow idea, it's when you explain your idea very quickly to your target audience. Target audience means maybe you're targeting sisters, maybe you're targeting brothers, maybe you're targeting seniors, maybe you're targeting youth. They, not, not your best friend, the target audience, when you explain your idea to them, they should, the immediate reaction should be, Wow. <laughs> yes, exactly like that. Try it. Look in the camera, even if your camera's off, look in the camera and just go, wow. <clears throat> so I'll, let me give you an example. I'll give you an example of a wow idea. How about a bar that does not serve alcohol, but it has everything. So like, imagine this. You're in, you're in Dallas, Texas, and you open a bar that does not serve alcohol, but it's got everything else. It's got the ch chicken wings. It's got the pool tables. It's got the, um, the games up on the screen and stuff like that. But there is no, um, there is no alcohol in that. So that's a wow idea. So even when I told you that idea, I guarantee you, you said, wow, like that, right? Maya said, wow, all of you guys want to go to this bar now, the halal bar. <laughs> that was just one idea, but that's what I'm talking about. You say an idea, people are like, I want to be a part of that. I really like this idea. So let me tell you that your wow idea just needs a little bit more thinking. I know you spend a lot of time thinking about your current idea. And, um, and yeah, I'm going to do coach business. I'm going to do hijab business. I'm going to do a, co uh, this, I was going to do coaching again, but think a little bit more. I, I tell people that the hardest part of the Nishiro program, the hardest part is coming up with a wow idea, but somebody else will say, everybody has an idea. No, everybody has basic ideas, good ideas, maybe even excellent ideas, but very few people have outstanding wow ideas. Very few people. And like I said, go around the community, you'll see people don't have it. I wanted to also take note that a lot of, this is actually a bonus point I'm telling you guys here, is sometimes you will, um, sometimes you will think your idea is an idea, but it's not an idea, it's an outcome. This is kind of like advanced what I'm saying here. What you'll have an idea, you'll think it's an idea, but it's actually an outcome. So let me give you an example of that. 
somebody comes to me, they're in my class and they say, I, my idea is to connect the youth with the seniors in the community. Okay, great. That's not an idea. That's an outcome that you want. That's an outcome. Somebody else will say, I want, you know, Muslims to, uh, I don't know, honor our athletes, you know, and what, okay, great. That's an outcome. That is not an idea. That's not a vehicle. That's not, you don't, you haven't said how you're going to get to that destination. It's just an outcome. Outcomes are nothing. <laughs> it's just like, good for you, make dua, like that. I mean, well, dua is important. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, mistake that people might make is they'll say that they're, they'll say what their idea is, but they're actually talking about how they're going to execute. So where are you going to execute your idea? Are you gonna execute your idea online or offline? Are you gonna execute your idea in your city physically or on you, or, or for example, are you gonna do it on YouTube? Are you gonna do it on Instagram? Are you gonna do it on TikTok? Are you going to do it on Zoom? Where are you going to do it? What is the platform? What is the field? that you're going to be executing on. So somebody will say, my idea is to have a YouTube channel. Okay, great. That's not necessarily an idea. That's a platform. Um, and the platform is there. It's like, what do you want to build on it? So they're like, yeah, my idea is to build on it. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So your idea has to be like, what is your wow idea? Somebody's like, I like that this. Okay, so there are three types of ideas. Um, let's say A, B, and C. Um, you got A ideas, B ideas, and C ideas. A, B, that's a C idea. That's a B idea. That's an A idea. I, I say this for employees when you're hiring something, because even in the system that I'm talking about, it leads to who do you bring on your team? A players, B players, and C players. C players are the type of people that, um, well, B players are people that when you tell them to do something, they do it and they don't do anything more than that. So for example, you tell a painter, hey, paint this wall, he paints it, that's it. He doesn't tell you that, hey, you should use a double um, um, coding, you should, you know, this color would be better than whatever. It doesn't do it. It just does what he said, what you told him to do. That's a B player. Or for example, if you're setting up a conference or an event party, a wedding or something like that, a B player is someone you're like, put the chairs here. So that person puts the chairs and then goes and sits down and does nothing waiting for the next um, request from you. And you're like, ah, oh, can't you see that you should put the tablecloth? And they're like, okay, okay. They do whatever you tell them. That type of a person, <laughs> I like that, Savija, basically teenagers, right? They just exactly, well, that's exactly it. They're just like teenagers. They only do what you tell them to do. They don't use initiative. The, a, a C player is worse where the C player is, you tell them what to do and they don't do it and you have to follow up with them. So this is a person, hey, you're setting up chairs for an event. You tell them, put the chairs out. They put three chairs and then they went for lunch. <laughs> you have to call them and like, hey, when are you going to get this done? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had an exam. I had to go talk to somebody. I'll be back later. And Jolly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a C player. That's somebody that you have to follow up on and causes you grief and stress. Okay. And then, and then A players are people who are, um, you don't even ask them but they do things that you didn't even realize could be done. So this is a person, um, one moment, please. This is like a person, I have one example that I always give of this sister in Winnipeg. And um, I was doing a lecture and right in the middle of the lecture, I wanted to write something on the board. This sister pulls out markers from her purse and I'm like, who walks around with markers? And she said, I thought that you might want to write something. So I planned in advance. I'm like, Allahu Akbar, mashallah. And then Salah time comes and I'm like, hey, should we pray here in this, in this university room? And she's like, um, I have prayer mats with me. Who walks around with prayer mats? She's like, I thought maybe that you would, um, that Salah time would come and we'd want to pray and we need somewhere clean to pray. So that's an example of an A player, two steps ahead of you, okay? So you get the concept, A player, two steps ahead of you, B player, they only do what you tell them to do, 
and make stress in your life. C player is even when you tell them to do something, you have to follow up and you have to hire somebody to follow up with them to make sure. Let me tell you the secret to success in your business is get rid of the C players, have minimum B players and try to attract A players. Attract A players and when you work with a team of A players, wow, life is amazing. Okay, cool. Your ideas, your wow idea, because we're here in day one of our five day soup challenge, your wow ideas also are A, B, and C. You might have an idea that is two steps behind you. What I mean by that is you might be, hey, hey, I'm starting a halaqa. Here's a sister. She says, my big idea is I'm starting a halaqa. Okay. The ultimate halakhas are the ultimate C ideas. They're two steps behind you. Nobody cares about your halakha. Everybody's done a halakha before. Everybody's going to come for like one and a half sessions and then they're never going to show up again. So you have to keep pulling this halakha. You have to keep following up with people. This halakha is pulling you back. They don't want to hear about your halakha. They just want to hear about you. They don't care about that other stuff, okay? That's a C idea. A B idea is... A lot of people, their ideas are B. When you mention it to people, they're not, that's nice to hear about this idea. But when you don't mention it, they don't really care. An A idea is the type of idea that even when you're not talking about it, people are saying, hey, can you tell me more about that idea? And I have an example of a brother who was doing this camp in Qatar. And I really loved what happened. Like one year, he decided not to do this camp and the parents came to him and say, no, you must do this camp. It's the most amazing thing that happens in our community. And we insist that you must do it. That's an A idea, two steps ahead of you. The idea is pulling you forward. The idea is pulling you forward. That's the kind of idea that you want. And here's also a bonus that don't think of your idea of how people will react right now when you launch it, because everybody likes a good launch, but how will they react 16 months from now? How will you react 16 months from now? Are you still going to be excited about telling people about this idea 16 months from now? And I, and I bring that up when people say they want to do a membership website. When people say they want to do a membership website, they just want to focus on content and people pay and become part of a member. I'm like 16 months from now, is the community going to, and a membership website is also a platform. It's not an idea, but let's just say, um, 16 months from now, is your audience going to be excited about that still? 16 months, are you going to be excited about your membership web website 16 months from now? So I call, I have my own, like, six, don't think about now. Think about 16 months from now. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> the next up is how do you select a wow idea for yourself? How do you select a wow idea for yourself? So if you want to just take a five second deep breath, this is your break for five seconds. How are you doing, Razia? That's nice. All right, no worries. These guys, some guys are, are in the souk challenge and they're messaging me on WhatsApp. <laughs> I hear you guys. Okay, here. Okay, so here's how you select a wow idea that's like gonna be wow for you. The first thing that you wanna look for, the first thing that you wanna look for is are you guys okay? Razia, if people are saying it's um, frozen. No, that was just one person. It's fine, Alhamdulillah. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> All right. So the first thing I look for in a business is, I know a lot of people, when they think of a business, they say, what's going to be profitable? What's going to make me money? And I don't think that that's the best thing to start off with. I think the first thing that you should start off with is, is it fun for you? Is it fun for you? 
Okay, so there's three things you want your business, the three boxes. It's an event diagram. You want the center of the three. One of them is fun. One of them is beneficial. And the other one is profitable. But let's start fun, um, um, profitable, and then beneficial. Okay, so the first thing is fun. <clears throat> so let me tell you guys the secret. So whenever, um, whenever I'm going for work, I'm telling you guys a story about my wife now. Whenever I go for work, I tell my wife, I'm going for work. And then she says to me, you're not going for work. You're just going to have fun. And then as I'm walking out, I turn back and I say, that's my secret. I always have fun. <laughs> okay. So <sighs> there's this delay in like, ha, 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 that's so funny. The first thing that I look at is whether I'm home or I'm away, whether I'm doing business or a pleasure, whatever it is, I always start with, is this fun for me? Is, <laughs> thanks, Razia. Um, is this fun for me? If it's fun for me, then alhamdulillah, I, that's like the first box has been ticked. Um, somebody came along and they said, hey, did you know that... Um, Uh, did you know uh, uh, MasterCard has a Sharia compliant credit card? Would Discover You like to market it for MasterCard? I'm like, hell no. Who cares about your stupid MasterCard? <laughs> it's not fun. Go ahead. Um, so uh, first thing is fun. Ask yourself, is this fun for you? Do you enjoy it? And how do you find the things that are fun? Check out what you already spend time on. Do you play games? Do you play games on your, um, on your phone? Do you, what kind of books do you like to read? What kind of websites do you like to go to? Uh, when you go into a bookstore, what section do you gravitate towards? What do you do when you have time off? All of those things are already telling you what you love. They're already telling you what you find fun. So find a business that is enjoyable to you. It's a lesson that I learned like in high school, which said, decide what you love and then get people to pay you for it. So when you're working, you don't even feel like you're working because you love it so much. Um, so for example, actually right now, I really love making videos, like high quality videos. If you saw the curious Muslim videos, the Qalbi ones that I've been doing, I spend a lot of time on those. So please watch them and press the like button. But um, I enjoy it. I feel like honored to be able to do these things. And, and I'm curious, I go searching up the topic. I really enjoy it. So I spend time on it. So the second thing that you want to look for, after you find something that's fun, you have to find the angle where it's profitable, where it actually makes money. So a lot of, sometimes you have people who have a really great idea and it's fun for them, but they don't make money from it. You can't go very long in a business idea if it's not profitable, if it's not profitable. Sometimes you're shy, sometimes you're scared, sometimes you don't know how to sell it and whatnot. So you keep going, going, going until until you run out of money and you got to go get a regular job because it's not profitable. So you have to find a way that it makes money. Okay. Um, and, and that's what, you know, um, yeah. number three is you want it to be beneficial. And this, I think here is the difference between me teaching you in an Islamic content context versus a non-Muslim teaching you. A non-Muslim could be just like, hey, if you sell on Amazon, you can make a lot of money. Somebody else says, hey, if you trade Bitcoin, you can make a lot of money. A <laughs> third person says, hey, if you do this, you can make a lot of money. And, and then, uh, yeah, maybe it's fun and, and profitable, but are you really, really benefiting people? And this is the distinction. If you can benefit people, then you can make your intentions for the sake of Allah. If you can benefit people, you can make the intention for the sake of a lot. You know, what's interesting. One time I was doing some business and, um, and one brother said to me, if it's so beneficial, you should make it free. And I, and I'm like, wait a second, you would prefer that I do a business that is not beneficial to people and then charge money for it. Like, like you want me to sell cigarettes, cigarettes are fun and profitable, but they don't benefit people. 
right? It has to, like, if it's beneficial, you can make your intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. Here's a bonus for you guys um, who are thinking, if it's beneficial, will my reward, this is the curious question, if my business is beneficial, will my reward be diminished in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh, good question. How about a curious Muslim video on that topic later? Did you know that when the companions عنهم, went out for battle with the Prophet وسلم, after the battle, they got paid. After the battle, they got paid. It's called war spoils. They got money. They got money from it. And every um, business that you do, it benefits people. You can have a good intention and hope for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has nothing to do with um, that Allah is not going to reward you oh, because you took money. <laughs> like, oh, you took money? Then you must not get any reward. Audhu billah. Who told you that? You have a beneficial business like a doctor makes good intention. He's helping people and gets paid a lot of money. Good for him. You can have a business that's doing really good and you're getting paid because that's what happens when you provide beneficial services. Money comes to you and becomes profitable, right? And when it becomes profitable, you make a lot of money. Good for you, alhamdulillah. So beneficial is, um, and that's why what I'm really um, <clears throat> here when I, when I talk about business, we're, in your life, you're going to be spending so much time in your mind, in your time, in your work effort, on your business. So why not make like your da'wah or make your, your um, intentions for the sake of Allah so that you can win the hereafter and follow what you love and is fun for you and benefits the people and Allah is pleased with you and you make a lot of money in the process too. Why not? Why can't you have it all? That's what we're talking about here, inshallah ta'ala. All right, I will finish up. I will finish up on telling you guys where to find wow ideas. Where do you find them? How is an idea wow? Where do you find those ideas? So a lot of times people think that ideas come from, think that ideas come from um, just the top of their head. Like apple falls on the head. And then they're like, I have a wow idea. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, yeah, sure, some ideas can come like that, but you can actually research a really good idea. Here are three ways to find wow ideas. Here are three ways to find wow ideas. Number one is um, cross industry thinking. Cross industry means that you go to another industry, um, such as uh, taxis. Taxis have a dispatch. They have a, dispa a dispatch, basically somebody you call and say, hey, I need a taxi. And then they have all these drivers and then they send a driver, right? And taxi. How could you apply a dispatch service to like matrimonial services, for example, like mat matrimonial counseling? So for example, I am a matrimonial counseling dispatch service. I have all these for example, um, counselors in the city that nobody knows about. And if you have a problem, call me late at night. It could be 2 a.m. in the morning having a fight with your husband or wife. And I will dispatch somebody to help you guys like calm down, for example, right? Cross industry thinking. You take ideas from one industry, apply it to another industry, and all of a sudden, you have a wow idea. And that's the sound that comes when you have a wow idea like that. Okay, the next one is late night with Google. <laughs> late night with Google. I call this late night with Google. I have found scientific, so I used to say this for many years, and then later I found, um, I found scientific evidence that you become more creative late at night. When your brain is tired, you want to sleep, but you keep searching. So um, <clears throat> you take your idea, and let's suppose uh, you want to do something for the youth, right? You want to do a business for the youth. So you might say, um, let's say you want to start a karate class for, for Muslim girls. Yeah. You want to start a karate class or even a basketball, a basketball class for 
um, little girls in your community, type youth basketball in, in Google. Type youth basketball in Google and op- and keep going deep, 15 pages in. Keep clicking, 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 clicking. Every website, not just the first one that comes up, keep clicking, 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 clicking until you've got like 25 websites open, 50 websites open. And now you have a blank piece of paper and on one side of your paper, you say um, ideas that I like. And on the other side, like maybe ideas I don't like or whatever. And now go through um, the first basket. You will find some of the most creative stuff. Youth basketball. Oh, I really like what they did. Oh, I like their logo that they use there. Oh, wow. They're going to Costa Rica to play basketball. Oh, wow. These people are doing this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You start going through and then you will come out of late night with Google with amazing, amazing wow ideas for what started as, you know, youth basketball for, you know, little girls become something like every time you share it with people, they're like, wow, where did you come up with that? And then you're like, you know what? I took this five day soup challenge by Mr. Sharif and he told me about late night with Google and I did it and it was wow. Number three is, um, <clears throat> Um, Number three is morph your questions. And um, and by morph your questions, it means like, what are you trying to achieve? So in in the case of the little girls basketball class, for example, what question are you trying to answer? So you might say how the question could be, how, um, um, how can I engage young Muslim girls, okay? How can I, now now morphing the question says, how can I prepare young Muslim girls for NCAA basketball? How can I um, make young girls um, honored to wear hijab while playing basketball? How can I, do you see how the question, when you change the question, it comes up with a different answer? The idea that comes out of the question. So whenever you guys present an idea, you haven't said it, but there is a question that led to your, your, um, your idea is the answer. So what I say is like, what is the question? If your halaka is the answer, what is the question that you were trying to, you were trying to respond to? And if that's the case, what would happen if you changed your question? How would the idea come out differently? And the other thing that I would I, I say to people is, what is it that you do? And then they're like, well, look, I have a, I'm on YouTube. I'm like, I don't care if you're on YouTube or Instagram. I'm like, what do you do? What is the pain that you solve for people? So if your idea, if people come to you with pain and you are like, if they pressed your idea button, like a red button, they pressed it and their problem was solved. What is the pain that you're going to solve for them? So you can tell me you're doing doing a halaka, good for you. What is the pain that you're going to solve for them? You could tell me you're going to do a coaching business. I'm like, I want to come to you, press a button, and some pain is going to be solved for me. What is the pain that you're going to deal with? Um, <clears throat> boom, and you keep booming, you know, pressing. What is your idea? Uh, sorry, your, what is your wow idea? And they press the red button, it's solved for them. All right, cool. So this is day number one. Like I said, once you get started on day number one, um, I want you to like just get in a race car, short but sweet. You're getting in a race car and you're going to zoom forward. I would love to see you guys go live. Let me tell you something about going live, by the way. Before we used to be like, hey, it's optional or not. If you want to start a business, um, Google, Facebook, YouTube, the whole world has already determined that we will be communicating with video. The whole world, the Google giants that own trillions of dollars have decided that we will communicate with video. If you're not comfortable getting on video, then you will not be heard. Let me say it again. If you are not comfortable in video, you will not be heard. And that decision has already been made for you by Google and Facebook, YouTube, and and the whole world. Okay, so here you're in a safe spot. I would love for you to, even if you're nervous, even if you're like, oh, my, my hair's not, or whatever, you know, just, uh, just um, press live. Um, the good news is most people are not going to watch your video. Even my video, I went live 
And Facebook, I went live in this group. Facebook doesn't know how cool I am and did not distribute my video to you guys. In the Souk challenge, there was only one person on with me when I went live this morning. And, um, uh, but that's fine. The algorithms have to learn that you are a person that's always showing up. You are a person that people are interested in listening to and watching. And so just keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. And then the algorithm overlords will then say, this is a cool person. Zalia. Yeah. 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 A cool person. Everybody wants to click a happy face Zalia's video. Yeah. So go live, share some gems that you and digest what I've said. I've noticed for the people that are shy to keep um, shy to go live in the in the group, in the Facebook group. Once you try it, you will become addicted, inshallah ta'ala. And also, I would like and encourage you guys. Um, <clears throat> um, it's like Japanese, Japanese culture where you take care of your neighbors before you take care of yourself. Uh, American culture is take care of yourself first. Who cares about your neighbor? So for example, COVID happens and everybody starts hoarding the toilet paper and there's enough for everybody, but not if people hoard. That's American culture. Then you got like Japanese culture. I saw in Japan, in Osaka, there was a sign that said, in case of an earthquake, step number one, check on your neighbors. I was like, what? check on your neighbors like that is such a Japanese thing right and so what if you had the same attitude here in this challenge that's the kind of family atmosphere that we want to make more and and how comfortable I know you guys might feel a little a little bit um nervous to go live what if you cared for the other brothers and sisters in this group more than you cared for yourself you cared for their success you care to give them feedback. You care to, you know, when they do a video, you show up for their video. You care to uh, encourage them. What will happen to our group? That's exactly what happens in our courses, inshallah ta'ala. It creates a whole culture of people taking care of each other and loving each other the way our community is supposed to be. And if you've taken any classes with me or been in any, um, any Facebook groups, you know what I'm talking about. But in order to do that, you got to make yourself known. If you just hang out in the background, you're just a number, you're just like a lurker, a ghost out there, nobody can help you. Nobody can help you, nobody can support you. So put yourself out there, make the intention, you're in a safe spot here, inshallah ta'ala. When you see somebody um, post a video, press the like button, press the love button, um, put a comment down in the, in the thing, show some support. And inshallah ta'ala, when we create that community, you will also benefit from that support. All of us benefit from that, bi'idhnillah. Um, this is day number one about the wow idea. I would love for you guys to go live or you can type, you can also type in the chat. I mean, in type in the post, no problem. Most people, I've seen the, the numbers, few people will go live. A lot of other people will type. You can do both. I would love for you to go live. How about you do live and type your comments? Type your comments and then go live, no problem, right? Um, <clears throat> And tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, day number two, to encourage you, I'm going to, this is the wow idea, but tomorrow I'm going to give you a wake up reality <laughs> to your ideas that you're going to go, wow, that's amazing. Inshallah ta'ala, but that's day number two. We'll wait for it then. Razi, I'll give it to you. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Uh, so alhamdulillah, lots of people in the chat buzzing. So much to take away from the first session. I want to recap um, some really important points. Alhamdulillah, if you are sitting with the points that Shaykh just shared and you want to do that deep dive and alhamdulillah, things have been, you're, you know, your wheels are going with that wow idea. So the VIP package, I put the link there and that's going to be starting tomorrow. So some of you have been asking, is that today? It starts tomorrow. So right after this session tomorrow, we're going to be hopping on a private Zoom session and you're going to get business group coaching with Sheikh. So a lot of the things that you would, you know, want to pick his brain about or you want to just go deeper in or you want to bounce an idea off, inshallah, that will be an opportunity that you get. So the VIP sessions are happening Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and that's going to be with Sheikh. And then Friday, I'm going to be on with you guys, inshallah, for that VIP coaching session alhamdulillah and um you know i really want to reinforce the point that sheikh just um emphasized 
really tr taking care of the community and for you guys to show up and bring value in what you're doing. So go and take those training wheels, use the challenge to have those training wheels and going live. And I'm going to be putting up our poster very shortly right after the session for the prizes. So alhamdulillah, we like to reward people who take action. We like to reward people for alhamdulillah, you know, encouraging you to come out of your comfort zone. Um, and so inshallah on Thursday, we're going to be giving away two grand prizes of Nishiro, which is our exclusive, you know, one $2,000 US um, course. And we're going to be giving that away to those of you that are showing up, mashallah, that are pushing yourself and really wanting to, you know, take the maximum impact away you can from this challenge. So I encourage you to do that. We're going to be putting up the homework today. So based on what Sheikh shared with you, inshallah, this is going to help you really keep those wheels going, engage with that. So I encourage you to do the homework, go live, share what you took away, really process that, that together. And we're going to be doing day two tomorrow, again, 10 a.m. If you have people in your life that you feel like need to be here, they need to hear this, they're stuck in some limiting story of why their business won't take off, it's not too late to invite them. So I highly encourage you, share the link with them, invite them to join the challenge, inshallah, they can be here with us for day two tomorrow, get the word out. Um, you know, so many people, subhanAllah, have been sitting on an idea or have an incredible cause that they've been wanting to champion, but they just keep telling themselves they're not able to. So this is the community you want to encourage them to join and be part of, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Yeah, can I, can I add something to what you said, Razia? Not only... Mm -hmm. Um, some of the things that I said here can save you like three years, five years, 10 years of pain. For example, like just the idea of the ABC players. If you understand that concept now, imagine how much, how many years of your life you'll save by not connecting with C players and recognizing it from the beginning and just like back out from that little hints and techniques instead of, you know what I said about that's not an idea, that's a platform or um, you're like, yeah, it is a platform. It's not even an idea. That'll save you five years of going around telling people that your idea is a YouTube channel when YouTube is just a platform. So you're not only save, you know, it's, it's time saving. That's what I want to say. And, and that's huge, Shay. I mean, just today's session, so many things that you just dropped um, that people might have been in a wheel in and stuck in and you're wondering like why things are not getting traction or momentum so absolutely um you know share the head share that goodness invite others to join as well inshallah and take us in your post take us in your lives as you do that on facebook especially for those who's going to be first time tag us and we, we will chime in i love to comment and um you know mashallah rally you on so alhamdulillah jazakallah khair for being here with us you guys we're going to see you on day two we're going to see you in the group inshallah sheikh might make some surprise appearances in the facebook group so you know you can hop on those lives as well and that's going to be awesome so we'll see you guys tomorrow inshallah 10 a.m same time right here assalamualaikum everyone assalamualaikum